just me and my guitar Hey, what's up guys? It's Mark back here in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. I thought I'd give you a little look at the koi. Still a little bit busy. Temperature's quite low, still about six to seven degrees. But they're still pretty active in there. Mooching about looking for things and having a little play with each other through these winter months before the weather warms up again and we can get those covers off outside and uh, start enjoying them in the garden again. Right then, on today's little episode of Mark's Aquatics, I'll just square you up on the old bench there. The workspace. There you are, that's not too bad. Right, today we are going to be starting the build on this big chunk of acrylic. Now, if you're a member of my group on Facebook, you'll notice that uh, Barry on there suggested that I make a paludarium out of that and he sent me a lovely little diagram of what he'd like to see in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up his ideas with a few of my ideas and um, and we'll create something now what I want to do is because it's rough cut on the top there we've still got the plastic on it as you can see there a couple of wraps of plastic that go all the way around to protect it so it doesn't get um, scratched up as we do stuff now the tops are doing rough sawn there's little chips on it around there so these are the end pieces with a when it first because it's extruded this stuff it comes from a, a big machine which is slowly pushing it and extruding it out like that would be so what they do is because this is the first edge that comes out it's always a little bit tacky so what they do is is they get their saw and they'll just chop it straight down like that and that piece then will go for recycling which is where i get this from so what we can do with it, because it's not up to what the customers are ordering, they like everything to be perfect obviously, we can get this stuff, well I can get this stuff fairly cheap, and um, before it goes back and gets melted down again and, re and recycled. So I've got a bit of work to do on the top here, so we've got a couple of chips on here. Now the circular saw that I've got is not very big, so it's, not, it's only going to cut through a majority of it. I could cut it and keep turning it like that all the way around on the saw but I think for the amount of damage is only a couple of a couple of mil I think I'll be able to sand that off with some aggressive sandpaper first and the bottom there is quite nice I've already done a bit of sanding on this bottom edge here which is where we're going to be fixing the base to okay keep that nice and smooth but yes we're going to do a paludarium with this I haven't made one of these for a long long time but these are absolutely perfect for making one. Like I say, they're, a th they're 300 wide, which is, uh, well, 30 centimetres, which is a foot wide, 12 inches wide, and um, by 13 and a half inches tall, which is going to be perfect. Now, what Barry suggested is if we put a door here, two around here, and then we can hinge it, so we can open our door up there, okay to um to access the inside and what i was going to do on the top is put a lighting system on the top here so we can keep some of the condensation from escaping we can partially lid this with another light on the top and then we can access everything from the front which is going to be a lot easier than we have to go diving in from the top to change and route things around we can do all our planting and everything from the inside but really we only need enough to get our hand in and to put things through which aren't going to be too big and too wide. I think that's going to be a little bit better. So we can have a bit more depth in the water. So I think that's where we'll go with that one, I think. So we pick that up with the old solitaire. Maneuver this about to where I want it to go. I think about there to do it. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the tape around this a few times because I'm going to run the saw across and around this paper. So I want it to stay put. Like so. I think that's a bit of a better size. Now we can get our hands in there, get them down to the bottom. And now we've got six and a half inches of depth, which is going to be a lot nicer, I think. And it's going to give those fishies more room to have a little mess about in there. Yep, I think that'll do. So what we'll do now is we'll go onto the saw and I'll spin you around and we'll cut this little piece out. It's going to be a little bit finicky, but we'll do it. Alright guys, now what I've done is I've lowered the... I've taken the fence off the top of the saw because I've lowered the blade right the way down and with these saws you, um, you've you got to take that off. It's going to mess around with the uh, suction and the extraction of the, the waste material, but... Um, it's not going to be for much of the uh, of the cutting. Now I've put the fence up on this side so I can put that against it like so. And I've measured it up now to the side. So what I'm going to have to do is roll it onto it until the saw blade comes through and then slowly cut it from left to right until I get near enough to the outside corners on both sides and then we'll have to flip it around and do the same on those sides there. Now, because it's a circular saw blade, we're not going to get our cuts right to the edge. They're not going to meet right in the middle because of that oval blade. So we'll have to cut the last little bit out by hand. So. Okay guys, that's all done. Now I've cut it out, you saw me do it on the circular saw. Now it only cuts from about there to there with the angle of the blade obviously because it's oval like this is. It'll only cut to the side. So I've just used a little junior hacksaw blade and I, those little bits on the edge there you see, on the other end, I've just snapped that off so I can use, I did have a pad saw somewhere but I can't find it. So now all we've got is these little rough edges here on the corners now which we can sand up. And then that will fit nicely back into there and then we'll have a nice little hinge little door now we can put a nice little acrylic latch on and it'll be all nice and clear as well to see through it so that's that part of the job done now what I've got to do is I've got to sand it all up make sure everything's all nice and smooth all the tops are nice and smooth and then we can uh, remove some of this packing around here and then we'll stick on the top okie doke we've done that bit now we've all sanded all nicely sanded up on the edges there we've kept the uh, all that protective film on as well so there's our door done all the way around there I've sanded all the way around the base as well as you can see now that's nice and clear around there and around the door as well that's all done now I've got this big piece of white 5mm here as well now I've just put that on there 
and drawn around it. And now that's going to be the base. We're going to have a white base on this one, five mil thick. And um, like you say, all this stuff I get, it's all end plates, so it's got scratches on it. It's not, you know, it's not brand new. It will polish out, but it's all extra. It's all extra work, but I don't mind that because you get something nice out of it at the end of the day a fraction of the cost it, you know that it would have cost you to uh, to buy one so uh, and a lot better material as well because a lot of these tanks you get these days they're very thin acrylic they crack easy and they're not very good at all in my opinion and the thing about doing it this way guys is you get exactly what you want cut this piece out now to, to size because I've got my router and I run that around and I trim it up later on so I'm going to I'm going to cut it square, obviously around there first, and then I'll just buzz the corners off across there and across there afterwards. So it'll give me like a semi round shape, and then once it's all done, I can finish it off then with the trimmer, and that'll bring it lovely and flush then. Just like I've done on these little shrimp traps that I'm making at the moment, you see? More shrimp traps are going to go up on eBay soon, guys. You can see a heap of them down there, I'm slowly making. And um, I've got to put the lids on, put the trap hole in there and the pipe in before. But that's what it's going to look like. So I trim it up and then I run the router around it and it looks like that in the end. So there you go. Or you can put a nice shot of whiskey in it and have a drink. How about that? Right, I'm going to cut this piece of acrylic now. So I'm just going to pause you, connect my little hoover back up and, uh, and cut this piece out. Okay. All right, guys, there you go. Cut that out now. You can just see I've left a little ring around there just for the trimmer to take that off. And now what we've got to do, obviously we've got to take the backing off of this in a second now. We're just making sure everything fits. So we've got a few, couple of mil all the way around, which we have. That's brilliant. So now we do the old peely bit, which is my favourite bit with acrylic. Because it looks all horrible until you pull this off. And then you end up with something. Uh, then you end up with that underneath. Look, absolutely mint. That is that piece. No scratches on that at all. And we got the other covering on the other side there. So now we know that's nice and clean. Now what I've got to do is I've just got to very, very carefully peel off some of this with um, some of this pencil 12 okay which is what I use I use some other different types oh, actually I'll show you while you guys are here how uh, you can get this stuff which is tensile 12 which is very very good at sticking acrylic bonding it together and I also use RS Pro as well the industrial grade one which you can see here which is the very very fine liquid version like water which you can just squeeze in with the syringe and it'll capillary action float in and uh, and and adhere it all together and glue it together but this stuff you'll find what it does is it, it's sort of a, it's not as quick as the um as the other one as the watery one but um there's another type i've got up here as well sorry i'll just i'm i'm all over the place right the acrylics that's the 16 you can get the 16 there that's the one i use some of you guys have asked me as well what types i use and you can get another type as well, I can't remember the name of it now, I think it's 4S or something, which is the liquid version of this one, which you use the same as the RS Pro, this one here, okay? All very, very similar stuff, obviously just packaged different for different manufacturers and stuff like that. But I've got a little squashy bottle there, I'll just take the top off for you so you can see. It's got a little nice little fine tip on it there. You've got to get special plastic bottles for this guys if you stick it in other plastic it'll just melt through it so you've got to be quite careful what you put it in this was from Trent Plastics if you look them up online or on eBay they sell stuff on there that's where I got this from so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run a bead around here first very very I'm going to put it up up like that I don't want it to run down but I'm just going to put a very very light bead all the way around and leave it on there for a minute or so and that softens up the plastic and then I'll push it on to the top of there and um, and then it'll stick lovely.
and already I can see that softening up that acrylic. Make sure that's all blown off clean. We've got some movement with this as well. So you stick that on there, slide it around. I always tend to give it a little wobble about, make sure everything's on. And it is all in the right place. Get another big chunk of acrylic which I've got there. Put it on top. Detail over that to protect that piece. So then whack a big concrete block on it. There you go. Now that's squashed it down nicely now. That's really going to adhere together lovely and bond into one, one big piece now. We're going to have no worries with that at all. So once that's dry, I'll get back to you guys, okay? And a word of warning as well, guys, before I shoot off, always make sure you do that in a well-ventilated place, okay? Because this stuff is really, really fumy. And you'll be, uh, you'll be flying around with the fairies with that stuff otherwise, so... Uh, be careful, open all the doors, if it's a nice day, do it outside. I'm going to take, I've got all the doors right open now, I've got a lovely breeze blowing right the way through here, so that's taking it all out of here. And I'm going to go and put the kettle on, so I'll see you guys shortly. Right, we're all glued up guys. All glued up, lovely and strong. Sanded everything up nicely now, so we've got a nice... A little bit of sanding I need to be doing here, just, just to level up that little this little piece on the top here, just a, a fraction there. But now what we've got to do is we've got to run our little router around the bottom again. So, we can lift up our protective coating again, that we pulled down. And then we'll plug in the router. I'll set you up on the uh, on the table down here. Have a quick swing around. Look at that. Onto the saw. There you are. That'll do. Right. Where's my router? Here he is. So I'll just demonstrate for you in case you ever want to do this. Your bearing. If there's anything protruding from this part here as you push it against the cutter which is spinning very very fast it chops it back and then that bearing there touches on the side you can see and then it won't cut in any further and then obviously as you turn it cuts a very very neat circle out on the bottom and then you get a nice matching cylinder there with a nice little nice little matching base to it so that's what we do so we've got to get the old paludarium I'm gonna put that down just leave that there and put my little fence against it there a minute I'll just set you up again And that will just pinch that there like a little vice, just to use that fence as a little vice to hold it in place. Now I've got to get the hoover because these things make an absolute huge mess. I don't normally film this part, but just to show you how I do do it, so you've got a, an idea for the future. If you want to, um, if you want to have a go at this, you can, uh, you can, you can replicate it, and you'll know how to do it. Okay. Right. Get the old router now. Guys, with these things, these are unforgiving if you get your fingers anywhere near them, okay? They are going to strip your fingers off in a split second, and they can snatch when you're, when you're using them. So you've got to be super careful with these things, all right? Always wear your safety glasses, which I've got mine on, because you do get a lot of stuff flying around. And I'm going to hold, because I haven't got an extractor on this particular model, because it's only a trimmer. I've got a bigger version of this, 
and um, which has got an extractor on which is built on the side so I can put the, the hoover attachment on there but I've got to follow it around with the hoover on this one so I use and so I can suck up all the bits that fly off now it's going to get a bit loud so turn your volume down on your TV if you don't like a lot of noise because uh, so I won't do this in hyperlapse I'll let you guys see what I do on this one okay right here we go lower your TV down nice cylinder cap on there and I am completely plastered in chippings they go everywhere but there you go we still got the wrapper on there but now you can see we've got a lovely edge all the way around which is matched up perfectly now with the base solid right now we can get back onto the bench boy that's better just brush myself off I'll have to get the hoover out in a minute guys and clean some of this stuff up it gets everywhere it does the things I do I don't know right well I think what we'll do now we can leave the base on because it's got that protective plate on it for now but we've got a lovely round piece there now so I think what we'll do is now we'll take this covering off so we can see what we've got underneath Where you get a load of static and everything sticks to it. My favourite thing. Right, <clears throat> and now you can see you've got a lovely clear start to this build. Coming on nice now. It's like a giant version of the shrimp traps I'm making. Look, I can make little mini ones <laughs> to keep one snail in. All right, we've got the door now as well. Which we can peel off. That's nice and clear. Now what you've got to do, what I'm going to do I think is put some, I'm going to melt and mould some extra pieces around here just so it overlaps by just a couple of mil just so as it closes it's got something to close up against so as that goes flush then it'll just have that extra little bit all the way around to stop it before I put the hinges on I think 
Yeah, that's going to look pretty good. So we're going to have to cut now some little thin strips. So I'll get back to you guys when I've done that. Right, what I've done is I've ripped down now some pieces that sort of size and I've just clamped a piece on there like that, you see? And now what we've got to do is get our little blowtorch and just keep going over that and you'll see it slowly you can give it a helping hand too but don't stay in the same spot for too long or you'll bubble it that'll probably be enough and now that will just bend nicely around Right, now we just get our little our glue and the capillary action, the very thin one I'm using, the RS Pro. And if you just stick it on there, it'll run its way all the way down, right to the end. And we'll leave that now for a bit. Can't believe how much this moss is growing. It's doing really well. And the, uh, the shrimps that we put in here last time have all settled in, all racing about, and all looking healthy. Now if you love aquascaping, you want to shoot across the George Farmer's um, channel. Really nice guy, makes some absolutely stunning aquascapes, and um, if you do need to know anything about them, I'd look him up, drop him a message, subscribe up to his channel, and... Um, He'll tell you anything you want to know about aquascaping. He's absolutely done some stunning aquascapes. Um, a couple of his videos back, I watched one where he did one of his big tanks. I'm not sure if it's a big acrylic tank he's got there. But he put a load of, uh, I think it was a load of Java fern. Looked like Java fern. Like the one we've got here in the centre. With some uh, driftwood in there. And it looked absolutely amazing when it cleared up. But I think he's just put a load of... Um, Rasboras in there as well. I'm not sure. I think he put some Rasbora in there, but he looked absolutely beautiful. So, never cross to his channel and have a look at uh, George's stuff, okay? And I'll link you up to uh, one of his videos in the uh, in the comments down below. Another group I recently joined is um, it's called For the Fish. Really nice bunch of guys on Facebook. Go and hit their uh, site up and join up with them. All good fun, lovely bunch of guys and um, get some good chat and help out a few people with their uh, with the issues and different things that they face in their little aquariums as well it's good to join these little chat groups I've joined a few recently and um, not realizing that you're not allowed to uh, to put your channel name and things on there I didn't really know about much about that so I say I'm a little bit old school where it comes to technology sadly and um, I'm learning, I do my best, <laughs> but uh, I was getting a few like, you're not allowed to put your channel on here and all that kind of stuff, so I do apologise if any of you guys do watch my channel and um, and I advertise my channel on your Facebook page, I do apologise, I won't be doing that again, I've learnt my lesson. Anyway guys, I think that'll do for today, so um, next time we're going to carry on with this paludarium build, we've got the main structure finished now. We've got the door being all um, glued up, so what I'll do the next time we see it, I'll glue two hinges on here. We'll have the door fitted, and I'll fit. I'd have fitted the top the same as I fitted the base here, because we're going to put a nice little round light in the top of this, because all the access is going to be through the door at the front. So we can have a couple of holes, little holes at the back here, for. Um, for some ventilation holes, it's important we have ventilation in our tanks to let those escaped gases out. So if you're new to the channel, pop back and have a look at the other ones. It may encourage you to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget the other channels. Go and see George's channel and for the fish Facebook group. Check them, hit them up as well. And show all them some love and that would be brilliant. Okay guys, take care, you're all stars. See you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my